We pray that you would uh, bless our hearts and help us to be doers of your word and also to prepare ourselves for your second coming, God. We pray and submit all our class mates into your mighty hands. We pray and dec declare your grace upon each one of us. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining the class. So today what we're going to do is um, do a quick full review of what we have covered in this course. So this course um, 213, um, the end times, um, is a foundation course for what we're going to do in our third year when we go through the books of Daniel and Revelation uh, in detail. So um, it is important to uh, remember many of these things uh, and uh, you know keep these things with you so that uh, when we come into the third year and start looking at Daniel and Revelation chapter by chapter, verse by verse, uh, this will be a background and help us understand um, that uh, much more uh, in, in detail, help us understand that better. So we're going to just quickly review. I have um, shared the full course notes. So, you know, I've kept it updated. And then I've just shared the full notes. So you can use this final PDF, which I have shared for your uh, review and preparation. So what I'll do is next week, put out one assessment that will uh, that will be in three parts, which will cover, you know, the whole course. Uh, it's not going to be difficult. Uh, it's just meant to help review the content uh, and it will be an assessment so you'll get a grade for it but the main objective is uh, to help you review the full course uh, through those questions um, and uh, it's an it'll be an open book open bible open notes exam so you can keep everything open look at it study it and answer the questions so it's not going to be difficult but the main thing is for us to understand the bible understand scripture and be clear about um, these prophetic end time events right so let's go ahead and uh, do a quick um, review of the entire course content let me share all right so uh, our course uh, really, uh, big, you know, we, we had five main chapters in our course. First, we established the fact that the Bible is a prophetic book. Then we looked at uh, the Middle East and regions uh, that are addressed in Bible prophecy, just to give us a little context then we looked at israel and its people in bible prophecy because a lot of the prophecy deals with israel and then we spent most of our time in chapter four which was where we attempted to give an outline of the main sequence of events so the most important is chapter four right so all the other information chapters one two and three is kind of a background uh, that's okay. But the main thing is in chapter four. So um, uh, I really want you to review that and be very clear, understand it, that this is the sequence of uh, events or what people call as a prophetic timeline as we can put it together. Of course, there will be variations. People have different points of view, but we shared what you know, we can see as we journey through the book of Revelation. And then the last chapter, chapter five, was a, a simple, small chapter where we uh, looked at what are the signs that we can point to today uh, that are uh, indicating to us that we are very close uh, to the beginning of the end. Right? That's kind of how we covered this course. So when we talked about, uh, in, in, in the introduction, we uh, explained why it's important to study uh, eschatology or the things that what the scriptures say about the end times uh, we went through several reasons why it is very important to study about the end times then we mentioned about our approach in studying the end times 
you know, keep things literal only when it's uh, necessary, well, clearly indicated, then it's figurative uh, and some other guidelines. Uh, we are also aware that there are other points of view uh, and uh, so we are open to what people have to say, but we are also uh, clear about a position that we take. Right? So we explain the different positions that people have uh, in uh, where they stand. Then uh, we, you know, we again, all, all these are um, uh, uh, approaches that we take in explaining or understanding end time prophecies. Then we looked at the Bible being a prophetic book. We said that there are several prophecies in the Bible which have already been fulfilled. And so uh, it's a very reliable, completely trustworthy book, the scriptures, concerning prophetic events. So we pointed a few examples of prophetic events that actually came to pass. And, um, and therefore, you know, we can look forward, uh, we can look at the scriptures and say, hey, everything the Bible says about what is going to happen will happen. And we need to understand them. We did a comparison or a parallel study of Matthew and Luke, where Jesus himself gives a complete teaching of the end times. Or many refer to it as the Olivet Prophecy, but Jesus breaks it down. And we uh, divided the, the chapter into clear uh, sections where Jesus is talking about things that will lead up to the tribulation. Then he talks about what will happen during the tribulation. And then after that, there's just an ex exhortation on being ready. So basically, there are these you know, two main sections, and then the fourth one, third one, sorry, is an exhortation. And you can clearly break up Matthew 24 into these three parts to understand what Jesus was telling us about the end times. We also listed out several end time terminology, like last days, time of the end, and so on. And what we said is, uh, each of these terms have to be understood in the context in which it is used. Uh, because uh, the same term could refer to different parts of the end time sequence, depending on where it is used. So always interpret these terms within its given immediate context. That's the key. So then we uh, turned our attention to the geography. So this is the area uh, in which the main cities, places, of interest are starting uh, 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 from the river Euphrates because Abraham was called out from among here. Of course, the Garden of Eden was around here. Babylon was around here, all of this. So the river Euphrates is very important because a lot of things kind of started around there, starting from the Garden of Eden to Babylon, to Abraham being called out. All of those things uh, happened in this area. So uh, we also just made reference to Daniel's prophecy. We did not look at, look at it in detail. We will leave that for the third year. Uh, but just made reference that Daniel spoke about these kingdoms. And all of these kingdoms were right there in the Middle East and around the Mediterranean and part of Europe. So these were kingdoms that Daniel spoke about, which have a part to play in the end time prophecy. Talked about Islam, how uh, um, Israel is surrounded by Arab nations all around. So uh, high potential, high chance of conflict. We referenced the European Union as being part of the former Roman Empire. This is important again as part of Daniel's prophecy. Uh, and Daniel mentioned clearly uh, in Daniel chapter 2, that um, in the days of these kings, that means when there is a, a loosely connected region where of uh, 
former Roman Empire and all the other country people, in those days, God will set up his kingdom. So uh, we are you know, right there in the time when uh, Daniel looked ahead and said, that's what it's going to be like. So this whole area is of interest to us. We look at it in detail and when we study Daniel. Uh, so these are the countries today, countries that are part of the European Union. So uh, the region countries that are around the Mediterranean are something we would look at. So again, the map there. Russia, again, is important. Um, referred to in Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, along with Iran, Iraq, Ethiopia, Libya, and Goma, all of these, Togamara and Egypt, all of these are mentioned there in Ezekiel chapter 38. So these countries are of interest to us. Kings of the East, uh, we don't know exactly who it is, but most likely pointing to China and other countries that go with China. Uh, the Valley of Megiddo, that's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to be fought. So that's um, a region right there in the northern part of, uh, towards this region here, north of Jerusalem. Um, so that's again an interesting uh, point of geography that we must be aware of. That's where the final battle will take place. And uh, all these armies will move in to this great conflict that will take place there in the Valley of Megiddo. About Israel itself, the most important thing was that God had promised to give this land from the river Euphrates to the river Nile. He promised to give this land to Abraham and his descendants. So that's important. And Jerusalem as a capital city is important to God. And the conflict that's going to lead to the Battle of Armageddon is basically over that land and over the city of what's happening in the city of Jerusalem. So that's why those, that geography is even more important. So we gave an outline of what happened to Israel, starting with a, from Abraham on. We know there was the Assyrians, so then the Babylonians came. There were the Medes and the Persians. Then there were the Greeks, Alexander the Great. Then there was the Seleucid Empire. And then the Romans came in. And the Romans were there for a long time. Uh, after that, the Muslims or the Arabs came in, took over. And it was around this time, 690 AD, that on the same place where Solomon had built the temple, the Arabs or Muslims, they established their holy place on the same uh, Temple Mount. So from that time, there's always been conflict about who's going to gain control of that place, a holy place, both for the Jews and uh, for the Arabs. So eventually, Israel declared themselves as a nation in 1948, and then in 1967, they recaptured Jerusalem as a city. Uh, but for whatever reason at that time, the general at that time, in order to maintain peace, uh, gave East Jerusalem back to the Arabs. Whether it was a good decision or not, in order to keep peace, he said, you can have control over East Jerusalem, and we will be on the west side of Jerusalem. But that has resulted in continued conflict, and many, many attempts have been made to try to bring peace, and the struggle goes on. Right? So that's kind of uh, information we have uh, shared here uh, in these pages, just to give you a look. So these are the regions where the Palestinians are on the West Bank, Gaza, they're trying to, they want to have their land. Israel wants it back. And then the Temple Mount, which we just mentioned about, uh, has the the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. Um, so these two, the Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque are places of, holy places for the Arab Muslims. Uh, but this is sitting on the place where Solomon's temple used to be. So 
the Jews wanted back. So that's where the conflict is. The Jews are able to come to the western side, the western wall, and pray there for now. Right? So, and uh, then the Jewish settlements, they are reclaiming part of the land for themselves. They're building their homes and reclaiming these areas for themselves. So good to have a little understanding of this geography and history. And, uh, you know, we are part of the church and God is working both in Israel and in us as the church. The kingdom of God is being extended. So we need to, you know, have some understanding of what's going on with Jerusalem, Israel, and so on. So we outlined here, you know, some of the things that will happen in the future, which we recovered once again in uh, in the next chapter. So in chapter four, we gave an overview of the events. Uh, this little uh, diagram, uh, this sketch, gives us a high level, high level outline of the way things are going to happen. So. We said first, the thing we're looking at is the rapture of the church. And we explained, we gave reasons, six reasons why we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. That the church will be taken out of the way before the Antichrist is revealed. But two important things that should take place. The Antichrist will come or will come at the beginning of the tribulation. There will be the Antichrist and there will be the temple, the temple worship, temple built and worship restored. So that's kind of the beginning of the tribulation. And then after the church will take place, the church will be in heaven. And I'll be mentioned some of the things we see in scripture of what will take place in heaven. There'll be rewards, there'll be mansions that will be ushered into, of course, there'll be worship going on. And the, it'll all culminate with the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we journeyed through the book of Revelation to understand what is going to happen, starting from here. So this was Revelation chapter four and five, where we said we get a view of what's happening in heaven. There's worship in heaven, and the Lord Jesus comes and he opens a scroll, meaning from this moment on, all the prophecies will start being fulfilled. So that's at the very beginning of the seven-year tribulation. Then from Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, all the way to Revelation 19, which ends up in the Battle of Armageddon, is an outline of what's going to be happening here on earth. So Revelation chapter 6, uh, we read about the seven seals, starting with the Antichrist coming in and a lot of things happening here on earth. Revelation 7, we see the 144,000 Jews who are going to be servants of God. Revelation 8, the seven trumpets. Revelation chapters 8 and 9, the seven trumpets are, are being blown. Revelation 10 is a parenthetical chapter. John is give, given a book to eat, saying you have to prophesy some more. Revelation 11, 12, and 13 bring us right to the middle of the seven years of tribulation. Revelation 11 talks about the temple being desecrated by the Gentiles, and Jerusalem being trodden underfoot by the Gentiles. That's the time the Antichrist will break his seven years of peace treaty. He'll break it in the middle. Uh, Revelation 11, but God will have two witnesses who will be prophesying from here, the middle of the tribulation till the end of the tribulation. So for the three and a half years. Revelation chapter 12 talks about how Satan is going to go all out to try and destroy Israel specifically and everyone who believes who has the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he's going to use the beast, that is the Antichrist and the false prophet. And that's going to go on for the next three and a half years. Revelation 13 read about the Antichrist and the false prophet um, who they, 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 the Antichrist establishes a global economic system you cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast and this false prophet or called the second beast establishes a religion where he's getting people to worship the image of the beast and this will go on for the next three and a half years then 
we come into Revelation 14, which is again a parenthetical chapter. It shows us the 144,000 Jews that's somewhere in the second half of the tribulation. They are up in heaven. They are worshiping God. Uh, then Revelation 15 and 16 are the seven bowl judgments are being poured out on their very, very bad, terrible destruction happening. Revelation um, 16, uh, the river Euphrates dries up and uh, the nations are stirred. Nations all over the world are stirred to start moving towards Jerusalem. Revelation 17, um, mystery Babylon, the, the false religion set up by the false prophet collapses and uh, it, it is rejected. Revelation 18, the global economic system set up by the Antichrist, the beast, that collapses. People lose money. And they, it's it's like the build-up towards the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 19 is the Battle of Armageddon. There's the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then Christ comes riding on a white horse with all of his saints. And there's the Battle of Armageddon taking place, Revelation 19. He the, the beast and the false prophet, the antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. And uh, the Lord Jesus comes and he sets up his kingdom. All the believers who died during the tribulation are raised up. And Jesus rules and reigns on the earth for 1,000 years. That's Revelation 20. So Revelation chapter 20, Isaiah chapter 65, uh, Zechariah 14. We read about these 1,000 years. Uh, nations will be taught to serve the Lord. Satan is bound. He's taken out of the way. All demons are taken out of the way. And there is um, a change in the very nature of things. The ox uh, and the lamb, they lie down together with the lion. The child can play with the serpent uh, during these 1,000 years. So the change in the very nature of things. At the end of the 1,000 years, Satan is loosed for a brief period of time. Uh, we don't know what the duration is, but the Bible says for a short time. And he makes one final attempt to go against the city of Jerusalem. But God destroys him and banishes him to the lake of fire. Then every person who ever lived is raised up. And there is the great white throne judgment, Revelation chapter 20. And the book of life is opened, and um, that is the final judgment. Those whose names are not in the book of life, they are forever sent into the lake of fire. At this time, all believers are taken out of the earth into heaven, and everything, the heavens and the earth, are renovated. The heavens and the earth that we know now will be completely cleaned out, destroyed, and there will be new heavens and a new earth. And heaven, the holy city of Jerusalem, will come down and be placed here on earth. And God himself will be the light and the life uh, on earth. And that's Revelation chapters 21 and 22. So this is the sequence of events that we went through in this particular chapter. Uh, I will I will just cover the next chapter, and then, of course, we'll open up for any questions that people may have. So we went through all of this. Um, I'm just moving through these pages very quickly. Uh, these are things we already covered. And then we said, what are the signs of the times? This is the next chapter. Chapter 5. What are the signs of the times? Signs that tell us that we are really close to the end. So we outlined some important signs. Israel being formed as a nation is important, and them taking over the city of Jerusalem is important. It's the beginning of the end. So that's the first sign. So we have seen it happen because one generation will see it. Jerusalem becoming the center of conflict, and Jerusalem is almost in the news every week. Um, that's again an important sign. The Temple Mount being ready to be rebuilt, and the possibility of having 10 leaders emerging from 10 nations that were part of the former Roman Empire, which is now part of the European Union. 
the possibility of a global currency and identification system. This is so possible in our day and time. It can happen, fulfilling Revelation 13. Looking at Russia, China, Iran, and Turkey, these are named, as we mentioned, they're na given by name in Ezekiel 38, and to see how these countries are aligning themselves is very useful, is very important. And uh, whenever there are peace talks, it's very interesting that most people say, okay, you know, divide the land, give the land to the Palestinians. The European Union and others, they are supporting a two-state solution. So that's interesting because Joel chapter 3 says that's going to be the reason why nations come to battle. Yeah, they're going to divide the land. So there will be some nations who oppose it and there will be some nations who support the dividing of the land. And that's going to give rise to this global conflict. So it's something to look at and see what's happening along with, of course, the Temple Mount, which is again a second reason of conflict in Jerusalem. Another sign, very important sign, is the church itself is getting coming to maturity and Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And that's amazing to see how God has brought the church to where it is over the last uh, 500 plus years. The gospel is reaching, has been preached to all the nations. It's a very important sign. There's increased persecution and opposition to the church. That's another sign. There's a rise in... Uh, global spiritualism and false spirituality and you can see all kinds of things being promoted globally trying to replace the knowledge of god knowledge and travel explosion again this is a big sign because never before in history has there been such an explosion in information we are living in that those times that daniel spoke about in daniel chapter 12. Uh, then there are some, what we refer to as generic signs, things that have always been there, but they're increasing. Uh, wars and rumors of wars, uh, hate and terror, uh, climate conditions, weather and uh, weather conditions, earthquakes and so on, famines, pestilences, the moral depravity of man. So the 17 signs, are all telling us we are very close to the rapture of the church, the coming of the Lord, and the beginning of the final seven years leading us into the millennium. So we keep our eyes open, we keep seeing what's happening, and we understand, okay, when all these things are happening, we understand we are really, really close. So, I hope you've followed with me on this quick journey through the entire course content. Uh, I would encourage you, I've given you the full thing, and hopefully someday, you know, my goal is to expand this into a book and uh, add, add all this information so people can read it and make it easy to understand. And then along if this with this, when you study Daniel and Revelation, then you have a very good understanding of the in time Bible prophecy. Any questions? I just like to, you know, leave the next half hour. If there are any questions, we can use that time for questions. Are things clear? Uh, any doubts or any things you want me to explain? Be happy to. Okay, so if there are no questions, we have um, completed this course and I, you know, you have the full PDF and of course when this comes out as a book, you will get an email from us and telling you to go download the book and make use of it. Happily use the notes, preach it, teach it wherever you can, as often as you can. So all you have to look out now for is next week. Uh, as soon as I put up the assessment in Google Classroom, you will be notified through the classroom. Same assessment will go on the e-learning. 
and then just take your time to do your assessment so that you'll get a grade and of course uh, it will help you review everything we have covered in this course uh, and with it we are done and I look forward to you know studying Daniel and Revelation with all of you in the third year we will build up on what we have covered in 213 BC 213 we'll build up on that in our third year okay thank you to all of you for being on this course I hope you found it useful and uh, you know helps you gain interest in studying Bible prophecy let's take a moment to uh, to close in prayer somebody could pray with us and uh, we will close let's pray dear Heavenly Father we come to you under the name of Jesus we thank you for this day. We thank you for the class that we have today. God, we thank you for everything that we learned throughout this course, Jesus. We thank you for Pastor Ashish. We thank you for blessing him with your knowledge, with your revelation, that he can teach us all these prophecies in the Bible, everything about your coming, Lord. God, we thank you that you're a God who speaks and reveals things to us. Help us to not to forget anything that we learn and help us to understand more about you jesus help us to get deeper into the world we thank you for this course we thank you for our college i thank you for all my classmates we thank you for every single thing that you reveal to us throughout this course jesus we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you everyone it was um it's a good uh, time journeying through this course with each of you um enjoy the break and um, yeah during the summer just just a little advertisement here from may 15th to july 15th we have a short-term bible course happening here in bangalore uh, we are covering uh, 18 subjects 18 topics but it's going to be you know in a very condensed way uh, this is mainly for people who uh, don't have time to go to you know uh, attend classes so this the, the all the classes it'll be full day um, 9 9 to 6 and uh, those will be um, uh, you know also on Google classroom so in case you want to attend you're most welcome to attend you you can just connect to the classroom we, we will send an email out information will be on our Bible College website as well uh, just to uh, if you want to learn um, and if you want to come here and learn you, for two months, you can also do that. And um, yeah, our semester will our next semester, fall semester, will start August first. So in between, we have the short term Bible college, two months for you know it's, it's, it'll be in, in English and Hindi. Uh, so those who want to you know connect to that, you're welcome to do that. But our fall semester will start uh, on August first, Tuesday. Okay, God bless you. And uh, yeah, let's talk to you all again. God bless. Bye now. Thank you so much, Pastor. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank yeah. you, everyone. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye now.